Hello and welcome again to another episode of Orchestra Graphics Tips and Tricks. Once more, my name is John Krajewski. And today I'm going to walk you through 10 tips on making better use of Orchestra Graphics within your InTouch application. I'm hoping that this video will serve both novice users as well as expert users, so hopefully everyone will find something. So let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one, data-driven navigation. In many InTouch applications, the design template is very similar. There's typically a large process graphic that's navigated with either a series of menus or animation links or other tools. And I'm going to show you a tip here where you can centralize that into a single place. Specifically, that place will be a data change script. There'll be a tag that you'll create, and in this particular case, I've created a tag called nav window selected. And anytime I populate that tag with a string, it's going to show that window that that tag is associated to. And that will allow you to either drive it from internal or external to that application. Tip number two. Flat icons. In modern user interface design, there's a design technique referred to as flat UI design. And one of the techniques that's used there is the icons. And the icons are typically what they refer to as flat, which just means that they only use two colors uh, inside of that icon. And they're usually mostly line diagrams, not a very detailed picture. Um, I'm going to show you here a place to get those flat icons. So in this example, I'm going to flaticon.com. And I'm showing you here where I'm just looking for an icon to be used for a report. Here you can see a large number of icons that have been returned when I've done that search. Here I can take a look at the individual icon and I can adjust that icon to my taste. So I can bring up that icon. I can pick out the file type of the icon that I want. Typically PNG would be one that would be great for Orchestra Graphics. I can pick the color and I can pick the size. And they're all for free. Great site. Tip number three, web browser. One way of placing advanced content into your graphic system in InTouch is to utilize a web browser control. With a web browser control, you can certainly access web pages, but you can access a lot of other types of content, whether they be camera feeds or documents or almost a limitless type of capability you have here. So we're first going to start with how do you get the web browser control? In this particular case, it's a .NET user control and it's coming from Microsoft. So we're going to go to import client controls from within InTouch. You're going to navigate and the path is shown here in the import dialog to a file called system.windows.forms and it's a DLL. There's more than just the web browser control and I'm showing you here that there's a lot of controls that come in when you import that DLL. The one that we're going to focus here is right near the bottom and it's called web browser. So when I utilize a web browser control inside of an orchestra graphic, I have two ways of, of working with it. I can have one, which is just going to a property that's exposed called URL. I can put the text for the URL into that property, and here I've just put the one for the Wonderware website. But if I want to drive that dynamically, let's say using a button. If I place a button on the screen, then I can add an action script to the button, and this can be done from anywhere you can have a script. Then I can actually navigate to the properties and methods of that control. Here, there's a method called navigate. Now I can pass in a string to this navigate method and it'll take me to any URL that I can pass in via string. Very powerful. Tip number four, custom shapes. Very often, if you're going to create a custom user interface, like the one I'm showing on the screen, you may need to go beyond the core shapes. So you need to get more than an ellipse or a rectangle. How might you be able to do that? So in this example that I'm showing here, I've created these curved buttons by using arcs. So I've created an arc element for the left side and an arc element for the right side of the curve. Then I've used the path combine to create a, cl a closed shape. The path combine tool is on the bar at the top and it's being highlighted right now. Once something has been created as a path, it's basically any like any other closed shape element. I can put animations on that. Any animation that's supported on a closed shape will work here. I can also color it as I want. And this will allow you to create a very custom UI. Tip number five, dynamic symbol size and position. Very often when you're creating your user interface, you may want to create some dynamic motion or ability for a user to interact with your system in a more modern or contemporary manner. And I'm going to show you some tips on how you can achieve that. In this example, I've got tiles. And every time I click in these arrow buttons, I can maximize these tiles. How did I achieve that capability? 
I've got a hidden rectangle, which is called maximize box. And it's hidden because it's been set as being transparent. This maximize box is the location that I'm going to drive all my tiles to go within. I, I'm going to show you an, a, how I've linked these tiles. So here in an individual tile, I've linked to the width, the height, the X position, and the Y position of that maximize box. Then inside of the tile, I have a script which is used to drive the size of the box, either from its original to the maximize box or the other way around. This is all being done because these properties of these graphic elements can be scripted. So you can script the height, you can script the width, you can script the X location or the Y location. So that way, you can create any movement or any capability for creating dynamic user interface in your application that you desire. Tip number six, smooth lines. In one instance here, I was trying to create some custom icons that were more of a flat UI design. And as I was trying to create them, I had some initial struggles where the lines looked pretty jagged. So I'll give an example here. I changed the width and the lines looked pretty jagged. If you run across this, here's a tip for correcting that. Go to the end caps. Change those end caps from being flat to being rounded. This will make it much easier for you to create smooth lines if you're trying to create custom icons that, it, that are in a flat UI design or any other time you need smooth lines. Tip number seven, resizable pop-ups. In some cases, you may want to allow for your users to resize the content on their screens. And that's very possible with our caster graphics because the content is vector-based. That means it's not defined by pixel, it's actually defined by vectors. And as you reshape them at runtime, they can re redraw themselves. And how do you do that? Here I'm going to show you an animation called the show symbol animation. The show symbol animation has many powerful capabilities and one of those checkboxes there says resizable. By using this animation link, when you show that graphic, your users can resize their content at runtime. Tip number eight, toggling symbols details. Wonderware has driven situational awareness design in user interface and introduced a large amount of content that we call the situational awareness library. In each of those elements in the library, you can turn on or off details. This may allow your operators to remove those things that are going to be a bit more cluttering of the screen and allow them to refine the screens. And then if they need the details, they can turn them back on or off as they need. And I'm showing an example of it here. How do we do that? So I'm going to take one example here, which is this level indicator. The level indicator exposes a variety of properties, and those properties can individually be turned on or off. Whether those properties are the tag name, the current value, the engineering units, you can set them all individually. And here, I drove them by one tag, but you have your choice in how you use this. Tip number nine, launching external applications. Here, I'm going to show an example where I'm going to click this Wonderware button, and it's going to take me outside of the InTouch graphic and outside of the InTouch application to a browser. And I'm going to feed that browser a property, which is going to be the address. Well, how has that been done? When you utilize InTouch and Orchestra Graphics, you can leverage the entire power of the Microsoft.NET framework. And that's what's being done here. So on the .NET framework, there is a set of capabilities that you can utilize to launch external processes. Here, it's called system.diagnostics.process.start. I give it the, pro the name of the executable. I can also give it a command line parameter. It's that, easy. It's that simple to launch those external applications. I've shown here using a browser, but you're not limited to a browser. You can launch virtually anything you want. Tip number 10, new InTouch demo. Everything that's been shown thus far in this video is included in a new InTouch demo. Don't worry if you're a big fan of the old reactor demo, it's still around, but we've included a new demo with the InTouch 2014 R2 SP1 install. It's being shown in its location on the screen here. If you're not comfortable with how to utilize this package file to create a new application, just look in that PDF document and it'll give you the instructions on how to proceed. This demo can be a very powerful tool in helping you learn how to best apply InTouch and how you actually build the applications to get those results. Everything that we've shown in this video is part of the demo. So if there's anything that went over too quickly or you didn't get enough detail, you can absolutely open that demo and tear it apart to help you learn and discover how to best use InTouch. Well, we've made it. There's 10 tips in 10 minutes. Hopefully you found value in these. And if you want to provide us some feedback, please do so in the comments section. Till next time, thank you.